Crop cut off the beginning. You start reading when you want it. Am I kind of in frame or? You're in frame, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, and basically just stop the camera when you're finished. And, okay. it off and take your time. Alright, good luck. Cheers. Today, I will be comparing two films, Total Recall and Total Recall, the remake, the new one. The first being released in 1990, and the second being released last year in 2012. The brief background into the uh, films themselves. Um, both of them are action, adventure, sci-fi genre. Uh, Total Recall 1990. Uh, Douglas Quaid, the character, the main character, is a uh, construction worker who has recurring dreams about Mars and a mysterious woman. Uh, he visits Recall to receive the memory he is so often dreaming about. Uh, this visit to Recall triggers a violent reaction and the thrilling plot begins to unravel. The, uh, the second Total Recall, released in 2012, is, uh, is slightly similar, but it has a different spin on it. Again, Douglas Quaid, the main character, uh, is a factory worker who begins to suspect that he is a spy after visiting Recall. This role, Recall, is a company that provides uh, memory implants. Uh, after this mind-altering experience, begins to rediscover abilities and truths he possesses within, resulting in a wild adventure. Uh, the 1990 film was directed by Paul Verhoeven, and the 2012 film was directed by Len Wiseman. Total Recall 1990 had a budget of 50 to 60 million dollars. It was a hit at the box office, pulling in 261 million dollars, with a gross profit margin of 201 million dollars. Uh, the film debuted at number one at the box office to critical reaction. Uh, to it was they they mostly enjoyed it. They they. Currently holding high ratings on many reviewing websites, referred to as one of the most complex and visually interesting science fiction movies in a long time. The second film, Total Recall 2012, not called that, but yeah, it was released in 2012. It had a budget of 125 million dollars. Came in at the box office at 198 million. Which meant of a which meant a gross profit of seventy three million dollars. So both films profitable, although the latter not being as much. The remake received uh, mixed to negative reviews. Uh, the action aspects were branded as visually impressive, which they, they were. They were very interesting. Uh, although critics stated that the lack of intricate plotting. Dry humour and fleshed out characters resulted in the original to be superior. But I don't totally agree. Which we'll expand on later. Technology. 
technologies damn it, technologies of production. Uh, Total Recall 1990, the original, the first one, had a, a runtime of 1 hour and 53 minutes uh, with an aspect ratio of 1.85. Camera used were Ariflex cameras with Zesis lenses. Uh, the laboratory was Technicolor Hollywood USA. Uh, Total Recall, the, the re release, had a runtime of 1 hour 58 minutes with a different aspect ratio, so obviously it's a, it's a more modern feel. Although same cameras you used, Ariflex cameras. Um, Obviously, use differing lenses. They use Panavision Primo lenses for the majority of their work. Uh, with the laboratory at Colorworks, Culver City, USA. The two films differ entirely regarding special effects. Obviously, because of the, uh, the massive age bracket. Uh, Total Recall 1990 heavily depended on rubber, rubber, rubber prosthetics and makeup to make their characters seem realistic. Whereas nowadays, like many films, um, CGI was used to, uh, to make the characters believable and quite realistic. Change of slide. Distribution and exhibition. Total Recall. 1990 was first released in the USA on the 1st of June 1990. Every other release was at a later date. The UK first aired the film on the 27th of July 1990, a few, yeah, a month, a few months after the US release, as well as Ireland and Portugal. The film was re released to the UK and USA on the 6th of July 2012. And the 10th of August 2012 in selected theatres, and it was also re released on DVD and Blu ray, which I think was to boost um, kind of awareness of the new film, which came out at the same time. Uh, and it came out first released in Hong Kong, Singapore, and Thailand on the 2nd of August 2012. Uh, the USA received the film on the Third, with the UK release on the 29th. Trends. The 90s was action packed, featuring the likes of Stallone, Willis, and Schwarzenegger. Lethal Weapon also shot over popularity within this decade. This decade, uh, especially the late 80s, 90s, were it was uh, when action film crazy. Uh, so you think. A sci-fi film is a little kind of out of character, but as it was advertised, it, it wasn't. It was advertised as uh, as just any other action thriller. It, uh, it mainly starred Arnold Schwarzenegger blowing up things, you know, bodily and gruesome action-packed trailer, which got a uh, which got many, many people interested. The cast, uh, Douglas Quaid slash Carl Hauser, the alter ego, um, was portrayed by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the original 1990 film, and then Colin Farrell in the 2012 film. Laurie Quaid, his husband, Portrayed by Sharon Stone in the 1990 film and Kate Beckinsale in the 2012 film. Kate Beckinsale was also married to, I think they were married or they were partners with the, uh, with the director, Len Wiseman, at that time. Uh, Melina, Quaid's friend, old friend before he had his mind altered, uh, was uh, Rachel Ticotin. In the 1990 film, and Jessica Biel in the 2012 film, and she was was kind of outshadowed in the film. But I'll get on that later. I'll get onto that later. Co Hagen, uh, portrayed as by as by um, 
Ronnie Cox in the original, and as Brian Cranston, aka Walter White, aka Heisenberg, in the um, in the newer one in 2012. And I thought I thought he played the character brilliantly. It was amazing. Again, I'll get a bit of that later. Um, and Koto uh, Matthias, the, uh, the kind of the good guy led the Rebels um, in the 1990 film was portrayed by uh, Marshall Bell and in the newer film was portrayed by Bill Nighy, the British actor. So, style comparison. Douglas Quaid, Carl Hauser. Um, I don't really like Schwarzenegger in the first one, in the original. I found him to be a bloodthirsty agent who didn't really seem to show any signs of emotion or remorse. You know, like I, I found like many of his films, he kind of just, just, just turns up and just kind of uses his presence and his kind of his big you know, presence to kind of do the talking. But I think nowadays you can't Colin Farrell, on the other hand, I found did act and he did show signs of emotion. Don't get me wrong, he wasn't amazing, he wasn't brilliant, but I think he was better than, uh, than Arnold. Um, and the relationship that he had with uh, Laurie, his, his wife, I thought was, was brilliant. Uh, Melina is uh, Quaid's uh, friend before he had his mind altered. Um, I think both were a bit, they were kind of, I think both were outshadowed by the leading man, uh, Arnold outshadowing Rachel by just, again, like I said, his sheer kind of presence and kind of, it's hard to describe, his aura. I don't know. Um, and then Jessica Biel, I found as, like I said, as, Outshadowed, outshadowed by uh, Farrell's and uh, Beckinsale's, so Douglas and Laurie's relationship, their, their fight scenes, um, just everything it had to do with them kind of outshadowed most of the other characters. Uh, like I said, this, this the duo resulted in the character being of less importance and delivering a smaller punch. Like that. Um, did I change the slides? No, I didn't. Yes. Yeah, star comparison, this will be my last one. Or well, last slide for star comparison, not the very last one. Um, Cohagen. Um, I didn't like Cohagen in the first one, 1990. I said here that he, he was a good villain, but we didn't see much of him in the film. He, uh, he sent his, uh, his right hand man. Uh, Richer, played by Michael Ironside, he sent him off to do most of the work, you know, to try and kill Quaid and stop him from fumbling his plans. Uh, but when he was on screen, he he was okay. Uh, Brian Cranston, on the other hand, I thought was was excellent. He played the character extremely well. Um, uh, he differed from Cox as he didn't as he didn't mind to get his hands dirty. I think all of the scenes that he appeared in, he was either uh, displaying his power, his dominance, or military skill. He's, uh, he was a real kind of presence, not like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he was um, yeah he was really mean. You could, you could tell. Um, social and political and um, in the original there is a clear segregation and difference of class uh, the mutants and poor have to buy air to survive living in rough conditions uh, whereas the richer more powerful individuals such as Cohagen and his goons and his crew and his army um, uh, are richer.
mature, they're more powerful, and they display this by controlling the supplier there, and they really have little remorse towards mutants and their well-being. The mutants are seen as inferior. Nobody really knows about them. They're just getting in the way. Um, on the other hand, well, not really on the other hand, but in the other film, I should say, um, still features segregation, but I don't think it's as extreme. Um, the, uh, the UFB, Kerr Hagen's um, Prime Minister, the UFB, he seeks to control the colony, the other half, the other side, by planting and blaming bombings on them, resulting in the allowance of an invasion to conquer their land so the UFB can grow. Um, the citizens of the colony are seen as inferior, getting in the way, similar to the mutants and, and the poor people of Mars in the, uh, in the first one. Synergy, this is the one I've been regretting because if you watch, especially the first film, it's quite complicated to understand, so writing it in words is even harder. But I'll try my best to explain. Uh, the two films can be seen to have similar aspects, having two sides, one fighting for freedom and equality, e.g. the colony, the mutants and poor people, uh, and the other for control, UFB and Cohagen, the whole kind of things. Uh, in the first film, this battle takes place on Mars, but in the remake, the fighting is done on Earth, with only brief references to the river. The main character has a slight differentiation too, right there we go. In the original, Hauser works for the bad guys and is a best friend to his leader, Kohagen. And he volunteers to have his mind altered to build a relationship and infiltrate the uh, mutants and the aliens. Only then to find that Quaid and then to find this Quaid in the colony of the good guys and start fighting for them. Although in the remake, Hauser has already found that the colony are the good guys. He hasn't, he hasn't volunteered. Yeah, he, he's found out, he knows they're the good guys, although in the original, he didn't. He was, he was on Cohagen's side and volunteered to get his mind altered. Um, so I hope that's... I don't know. Vertical and horizontal integration. Uh, there we go. Uh, the 2012 film was produced by Original Film and Prime Focus. Distributors included Sony Pictures and Columbia Pictures. The 1990 release produced by Karu Pictures. Uh, distributors included TriStar Pictures and Momentum Pictures. Overview. Um, the original I found to be lacklustre. Unfortunately, he didn't seem to act. He rather turned up and hit things with his fist. Although I found the plot to be interesting and diverse, the plot was really good, and I hope I explained it in the previous slide. I'm pretty sure I didn't, but it's a really it makes you think. It's a really good plot. But like I said, the characters were, were okay. And I think they were made even worse by Arnold kind of, you know, using his presence to overshadow everybody else. If, if you're going to have a main man and a main focus on somebody, he's got a kind of he's got a kind of act really. I, 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 I didn't like it much. Uh, I found the remake featured a greater depth of emotion regarding the characters. Uh, the action-packed relationship between man and wife kept me entertained. Like I said, uh, their relationship was really brilliant. It really, really kept you on the edge of the seat, the uh, action sequences with them in fighting. Although, again, similar to the first, I think that action 
outshined, outshadowed the, uh, the pair and muted other performances and aspects of the story. So my final overview, I gave the original 6.0 out of 10 and the remake 7.0 out of 10.